Hi, I'm Jonathan Ferguson. I'm one of the curators of firearms here at the Royal Armouries Museum in Leeds. We're in the stores at the moment, um, just looking at a couple of things that we think you might find interesting. Um, this is a piece that is not currently on display. Very unusual in terms of 18th century firepower. Um, flintlock repeaters. There are a few like that. This is one of them. Um, we have two, actually. Bring it up into shot. The, the mechanism into shot. So this is designed by a, a chap called John Belton. Um, this one dates to 1786. Um, cheat. It's actually written on the gun. Helpful. Um, more markings here, which I'll explain in a minute. So it's got a conventional flintlock lock, but it's facing the wrong way. Those of you who know a bit about guns will immediately spot it's backwards. Um, and that's partly because it moves. So you actually have two triggers. One fires the gun, and one, when this is set, and I won't operate it, because I'm not confident that I can put it back in working order, um, this starts out here, and moves back. So between shots, you pull the second trigger, and it moves the lock back one. Why? Well, because it's got multiple shots. Let's count the touch holes, I'll, you can see how many. Um, flip it around. It's a magazine repeating gun. So, magazine catch, which is a strange thing to say in the context of 18th century firearm. And um, it's a bit of a three-handed job, but it is at this angle anyway pop out the magazine and you would load that with powder and ball, powder and ball, powder and ball, powder and so forth and it is seven shots, seven shot repeating flintlock carbine which is fairly impressive and at the back proof marks and interestingly magazine is numbered to the gun or the chamber whatever you want to call it is numbered to the gun one two four so if you did have a reload <laughs> you probably have to have that number to the gun. The idea being, this won't necessarily fit properly if it's off another gun. We're talking handcraft production here, not uh, interchangeable parts by any means. We'll reinsert the magazine. In theory, you can carry multiples of these on some sort of load-bearing equipment. We've no idea if that was ever done. What you're probably thinking at this stage is, surely no one used this. And in fact they did, or at least it was purchased, and it was issued. We'll just put that back in place. So you, hopefully you see now how magazine in place, breech loading, of course, the lock starts up here. You need to prime and cock the lock for every shot, admittedly, so it's not quite a repeater. But it means you've got seven shots on the gun. And when, it, when the best rate of fire at the time was maybe four rounds per minute, loading from the front, this was a, a, a real sort of um, force multiplier. Um, so, why else is it significant? Well, as I say, it's actually been purchased, issued, maybe even used. There's more research to be done on this. But the symbol here is that of the East India Company. And there's a number below, 124, and we know, without even doing the research, that 124 of these were issued. That's a rack number. So in 1786, there's an army running around with repeating flintlock muskets or carbines. It's missing the ramrod, uh, it's not uncommon. It's got a, what I believe is a swing, sling swivel below the barrel, because there's another one at the back here, proper one. And that's about it. Fairly conventional apart from that, but it's pretty wildly unconventional in every other respect.